Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many know that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever and ever? In the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love and kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for how you just keep on doing great things for us. Lord, we praise you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this revival that's been going on all week. Oh, God, we thank you. I continue in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you, Lord. Oh, God, we don't take you for naught because you're a good God in the name of Jesus. So we're coming tonight, humbling ourselves before you, Lord, expecting what you have for us tonight. In the name of Jesus, if it's healing, if it's deliverance, oh, God, if it's depression, discouragement, Lord, we meet you here. We meet you here, Lord God, yes, because we Lord. know that you're God. Oh God, that you God, that you love us so much. Yes. And there's nothing too hard for you. So Lord, we come and Lord God. And we thank you. Because you. you just, oh God. Oh yes, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, to bless each and every one of us here tonight. For to speak it tonight, Lord, yes. that you would have a rhema word on high that will identify with each and every one of our situations. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. Lord, we praise you. We magnify and glorify your name. Yes. We look toward those that heals which come as our help. Because we know where our help comes from. It comes from you, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you sit up high, you look down, Lord, you weigh out each and every one of our circumstances. And we just thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we're going to give you all the glory. We're going to give you all the honor. We're going to give you all the praise. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we love you, Lord. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Let us continue standing for the reading of the word. Thank God for prayer. Reading from Psalms uh, 121, it reads, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help come from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of the word. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many know you are a friend of God? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah.
that just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Here's my desire. Just to be close to you. Hallelujah. Just to be close to you. Oh, just to be close to you. Here's my desire. Can you help me say just to be close? Oh, oh, just to be. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Here's my desire. Yeah. Just to be close to you. 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 Here's my desire. Just to be close to you. Here's my desire. Here's my desire. Just to be close to you. 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 Here's my desire. Hallelujah. Just to be close to you. Oh, just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that's your desire today, come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, let's magnify our King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, just lift your hands up all over the room, right where you are. How many want to be close to the Lord? I said, how many really want to be close to the Lord? Do you really want to be close to him? Would you lift up both your hands and close your eyes? I want the praise team to keep singing that, but I want you to sing it with all your heart. Everybody just sing it. Just to be close to you, say, just to be close. Do you really believe it? Wave your hand and say, just to be close. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Oh, my, my, my. Close to you. Is my desire. That's my desire. I just want to love him. I just want to be close and say, just to be close. Come on, I can't hear you. Say, just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. It's my desire. Sing it the more close you feel to him, just to be close. Is my desire. Everybody just wave your hand and say, Oh, just to be close. I need to be close to you. Hallelujah. I feel Jesus in this place. Just to be close to you. That's my. Oh, I feel.
service. I know everyone feels welcome. I do. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. And I feel free tonight to worship Him. They that worship Him must worship Him how? In spirit 
and in truth. And we bless God for another opportunity to be here in his presence. We want to thank you for being here. Give yourselves a hand. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Look at somebody and tell them, I made it, I made it, I made it. That's a good testimony, I'm telling you. Because you don't know what it took for me to get here. Look at somebody on the other side and tell them, I made it, I made it. Now that's a good place to give him a good praise. And tonight we're at the point in our service where we want to continue our worship and we want to continue that in the way of our giving. So tonight we want you to prepare yourselves to worship God through your giving. We want you to raise your hand if you need an envelope. The ushers will service you. They're coming down the aisles at this time. I ask you to take those envelopes. Also, for those of you who are members here, I ask you to fill out your care cards. That's a salmon-colored paper that they'll be handing out to you. It's the one of the ways that we keep up with who's here, and so we know how to love on people. And so our bishop wants you to fill out that care card. Let us know that you're here, present, and accounted for. We will appreciate that. Also, we want you to prepare yourself if you have not had an opportunity to present your tithe or to give your offering for the week that has passed. We want you to feel free to do that as well. Also, those of you who are streaming, want to say thank you for streaming into Greater Apostolic Faith Temple. There are so many other places that we know that you could be, especially via the internet at this time, but you've chosen to join us here for this service. If you'd like to give uh, electronically, if you're watching by streaming, you can press the button that's Below you on your screen, it'll take you away from us for a minute. You'll be able to give your offering then, and then you can rejoin us right back here for our worship service. Also, if you have the app called Givelify, we are attached to that app as well. You'll look for the Greater Apostolic Faith Temple Church on 4th Street in Clark in Detroit, Michigan, and you'll give there, and we know that the Lord will bless you and your offering will be used for the furtherance of God's kingdom. Let's everybody stand if we could. Everybody all over the room stand if we can. Everybody who has the ability to stand as close as you can get to a $5 offering tonight, we ask that you do that. That'll be a blessing to us. Some of you may want to give more. You feel led to do that, please do that. But get as close as you can. We're going to ask that everybody get something in your hand tonight, and we know that God will bless you for it. Now, this time, we want to make our faith declaration. We want to do it nice and loud and clear. You all do it in the mics because we believe what we say. Everybody, if you would, let's say we are. We are. And we are. One more time, even louder. Say we are. We are. And we are. And I always like to say that means that everything my father has belongs to me. Would you stretch your offering up in the air right now? Let's lift it up, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. We do give you praise and glory and honor because you're a mighty God. Yes. Lord, we will be nothing without you. God, we're nothing without you. You see us now, God. Some of us are giving out of our abundance. And others, of us, others of us are giving out of our need. But God, however we're giving, we're presenting it to you, and we know that means that we're already blessed. God, we're believing God this year for a miracle. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Somebody needs a blessing. But God, there are others who have their hands stretched out right now who need a miracle. Something only you can do, Lord. We believe you for it right now. And even as we plant this seed, we're looking for a harvest of a blessing. And God, we shall praise thy name and give you the glory and the honor. All of that shall be done. Everybody who believes God is a miracle worker, shout in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Please follow the direction of your ushers. They'll lead you out, and you can present your offering in Jesus' name.
Thank you so much. Let's give God another hand clap praise. Come on, let's give God a good hand clap praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Our music department at this time.
excellent God deserves an excellent praise. We're standing to our feet all over the room, but as we stand, I said an excellent God deserves an excellent praise. Come on, open up your mouth all over the room and put a sound in the atmosphere, a sound that says you're excellent, a sound that says you're excellent. What's his name? I said, what's his name? I said, what's that excellent name? Somebody shout Jesus. 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 How excellent is your name? I said, Jesus. How excellent is your name? Turn to someone and say, he's excellent. He's excellent. You know what your testimony is. You know why you're saying it. But I want you to get that in your mind, why you're saying that, and turn to say, hey, shut up my hand up. Turn to somebody else and say, he's excellent. Take my word for it. 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 He's excellent. Put your hands together one more time. Let's give God a praise. We thank God for being excellent in our lives, and we thank God for bringing us together here today. Anybody ready to hear a word from the Lord? I feel it. I said, anybody ready to hear a word from the Lord? Well, one more time, would you put your hands together and begin to give our excellent God a praise? I said, give him an excellent praise as we receive the ministry gift that we know as Elder David Hollis. Come on, somebody give God one more praise. Shout, he's excellent. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to that crimson flow, many arrows have pierced my soul, some from without and some from within, but my Lord will lead me on through him I must win. The rest of the words of that song says, Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass. Y'all, we gonna be home at last. Ever to rejoice. Somebody praise God for that wonderful day. You may be seated and we're thankful to God for all that he's done for us through this week. I'm thanking the Lord for these three days of revival. Amen. Amen. The Lord has been gracious to us and he's shown his loving kindness to us in allowing us to be partakers of his holiness. Um, you can't be holy unless you're connected to God who is holy. Uh, what you call holiness, uh, uh, what most people call holiness is just good morals. Holiness didn't come out of morality. Morality came out of holiness. Holiness, when people, when most people start talking about holy living, they stop at a good moral life. Well, I don't do this, I don't do that. But when you talk about having a right standing with God, being made righteous, being holy because of a holy God that lives inside of you, that can only be done by the grace and the power of God, and I'm thankful today to be able to testify I'm one of them today. What about you? I said frequently that it's a whole lot of lists that I'm on. I'm an African-American male. That puts me on a list by itself. African-American male that's educated. That puts me on a whole nother list by itself. African-American male that's educated with no baby mama drama. That puts me on a whole nother list.
But out of all the lists that I could be on, I'm glad to be numbered with the saints of God. It's good to be saved. And I know that's a word that some of us have gotten away from, but I'm glad to be saved and sanctified. It's just good to be saved. You don't live looking over your shoulder. You understand, no. And I'm not going to let anybody press me up against a wall to say that I've never sinned nor have I ever failed. But I'm thankful to God for the blood of the Lamb called Jesus Christ. He does wash. He does wash. For some of you, the outfit you have on tonight might be the first time you've ever worn it. But for most of us, we've worn this before. And we've soiled it before. But the reason we're able to wear it tonight is because between the last time we wore it and tonight, it got washed. When we put it on today, it doesn't smell like the last time we had it on. I'm grateful to God to be able to lift hands and declare, I don't smell like what I did a few years ago. Oh, hallelujah. He washed me. Oh, He washed me. And he made me whole. And I'm appreciative. I want to thank the Lord for the angel of this house. And I want you to help me give God praise for leadership tonight. Bishop Lambert W. Gates. And I'm thankful to the Lord. I could not come except he had consented and gave the call. And thankful to the Lord for the opportunity to share the word of the Lord with you these three days. Uh, to Elder Burgess and to Elder Russell. Uh, to Elder Davis, to Elder Khalil, thank you all for your hospitality. It's been outstanding. I appreciate it, and I'm grateful to God. Um, I want to I want to give God thanks that though we are friends, um, yet y'all treat me and make a short man feel tall, and I appreciate that. Um, have you ever noticed? Have you ever observed that there's some people, they treat strangers better than they do their friends? Have you ever noticed that there's some people, they disrespect family, but they hold in high regard people they really don't know? I said that to say that even though we are friends, I appreciate the way you all handle me. I'm thankful to God for that. And I salute, and I salute your leadership for that. I'm very grateful. I want to take a moment and just thank the Lord, even for my pastor. The Lord has blessed my pastor, uh, Lord willing, in a few months. He will be 96 years old. And God has sustained him. And God has preserved him. Um, there's a little, a uh, little... Uh, the pep in his step is not as strong as it used to be. But my philosophy is any machine that's been running consistently for 95 years, you can expect somewhere, somehow, for it to slow down. But I'm thankful to God that even though there's a little impediment in his step, yet his mind is sharp and his spirit still has good discernment. I appreciate God for that. And I'm thankful to the Lord. Not only uh, is the Lord continuing to strengthen him, uh, he is 95, soon to be 96, but his wife is still with us, and she's 93, soon to be 94. And the Lord has preserved them. They've been married over 73, 74 years. And God is good to them. And I just felt the need to tell God, thank you for them. Sometimes we don't appreciate enough the people. You never forget the bridge that brought you over. Yeah, I know some of you, you love to brag on what you did by yourself. 
I did this all by, I ain't never had nobody help me with anything. I did this all by, stop lying. Somebody helped you. Somebody gave you a ride to the grocery store. Somebody picked you up for church. Somebody loaned you $20. So, so, you didn't change your own diaper. Somebody changed that diaper. You didn't warm up your own bottle of milk. Somebody had to warm up your bottle of milk and then test it on their forearm to make sure it wasn't too hot. Somebody, somebody helped you along the way. Since you were born, somebody helped you. And you've got to learn to appreciate the people that God has placed in your life. Uh, it would be good for some of you to make a list. Don't wait till Christmas. Stop trying to buy everybody a gift on Jan on December 25th. Throughout the year, just pick up a little something and say, this is for what you did for me back in 1996. I, I, I was in the store and I just thought about you. This was something you, I just want to say thank you for something you did for me two years ago. Just, just, just I promise you, I promise you, all y'all looking for help, Become appreciative of what somebody's already done for you. You'll start finding help start flowing. Help will start flowing. Learn to tell God, Lord, thank you when I had the mumps back in 1975. Thank you. Thank you for here. Lord, thank you. Thank you when I had the flu last November. Lord, thank you. Church, I promise you, thank you goes a long way. Anybody's a witness? Tonight, let's go to the word of the Lord. It's in the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter number six. I'll begin reading at verse number one. Hosea chapter number six. Would you mind rising to your feet for the hearing and the reading of the word of the Lord? If by chance you did not bring your Bible or you forgot it or you left it in the car, share with the person sitting next to you or it's even appearing now on the screens up above. Just look and read. Verse number one, chapter number six, the book is Hosea. Come. And let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall ye know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain upon the earth. Verse number one, come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and the former reign upon the earth. Father, the word has just been read. Now open our eyes that we might see. Give us ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying unto the church. Father, I pray that there be no distractions to the word of God. But Father, I pray and I ask of you, give us eyes that we might see. Lord, while the preacher is preaching, let us receive the engrafted word of God. Let the word fall on good ground. Don't let the enemy come and steal this word. Don't let the cares of life choke this word. 
Lord, I'm asking you that I will not be guilty of misapplication or misinterpretation or generalization of the text. But let me rightly divide the word of truth. Save somebody tonight. Heal somebody tonight. Deliver somebody tonight. Lord, when we pull our cars off of Ford Street, let us be able to testify, I'm glad I went to church tonight. I trust you to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. For a few moments, out of the word of the Lord, I'd like to minister to you from this subject. Repent. Revive. And rise. Repent, be revived, and rise. Help me preach. Tell somebody around you, say, repent. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Say, repent, repent. be revived, revived, and rise. Preach to somebody else. Say, repent. repent. No, no, no. Y'all, 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 y'all got to preach. You, when you preach, you got to put emphasis on certain words. You don't tell people, hey, repent. They don't know if they done, done something or not. You got to be clear. Hit it. Say, repent. repent. Be revived. Revive. And rise. Revive. Now do it one more time for the third person. If you got to turn all the way around. Find somebody who looks like they need to repent. Find, find somebody. Find somebody. Some of y'all ain't moving. You ain't talking to nobody. Say, repent, repent. be revived, and rise. The word of the Lord is ministered tonight out of a book known to us as the book of Hosea. It is a book that is found in our Judeo-Christian Bible, in that part of the Bible we call the Old Testament. Remember, the Old Testament starts with what we call uh, the writings of Moses, those first five books called the Torah, in its general term, the law, the Pentateuch. It is the volume of five, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But also the Old Testament has within it those books that are historical books, those books that have chronology or timeline. It also has within it books of poetry and wisdom, uh, the psalm, the proverb, the ecclesiastical writing. But then it has prophetic utterances. It has prophetic utterances from those we have labeled, not God, we did it. We labeled them some major prophets and some minor prophets. Nowhere in the Bible did I read where God called any one of the prophets major prophets. Or minor. We labeled them simply based on the size of the book. So when you read Jeremiah, when you read Isaiah, when you read Ezekiel, uh, these larger books, we labeled them major prophets. But the smaller books like Amos and Micah and Malachi, uh, we call those minor prophets just because the books are smaller. Literally, some of the chapters, uh, some of the books only have two or three chapters in it. Well, this book, Hosea, would go under the heading that we would label minor prophet. Uh, but don't get it twisted. Just because we label them minor prophet doesn't mean that they didn't prophesy some major stuff. Matter of fact, one of them named Joel. Joel was listed as a minor prophet, but when I tell you he prophesied something major in my life, <laughs> he said, in the last days, said the Lord, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm a recipient of that prophecy. Well, it is Hosea. Hosea, when you begin to read him, you'll find uh, that he prophesies during the time of uh, Jeroboam, uh, King Jeroboam II. You'll see that there's been an issue where the kingdom has been divided. Remember when David starts prophesying, David, well, when David rather uh, becomes king, David becomes king over Hebron and David becomes king over Judah, over all Israel, and it is together, gathered as one nation. They are known as the nation of Israel. 
they, they fly under the star of David. Well, under Solomon, under Solomon now comes uh, where the kingdom, because Solomon did not walk in the way of God. I'm learning wisdom is not enough because that's what Solomon prayed for. Solomon prayed for wisdom. Remember the Lord comes to Solomon in a dream. And when Solomon wakes up, he realizes it was more than just a dream. It was actually a conversation with Jehovah. Hallelujah. Solomon has a dream, and in the dream, it's not Solomon going to God, but God came to Solomon. And God said, Solomon, what do you want? And Solomon said, uh, uh, Solomon said, Lord, Lord, I feel like I'm but a child. I feel like uh, I'm not apt. I feel like I'm, I'm inadequate to lead your people. He says, Lord, I'm coming behind my father who was a great king for 40 years. He said, and I just don't feel adequate enough. Uh, he says, so Lord, I'm asking you for understanding. Give me understanding that I might go in and out before your people. Lord, I need wisdom. I need wisdom how to go in and out before your people. God said, Solomon, the thing you asked for, it touched me. Solomon, it pleased me. God said, therefore, because you didn't ask for the heads of your enemies. God said, because you didn't ask for silver and gold. God said, because you didn't ask for the nations round about you, God said, I'm going to give you what you asked for, and I'm going to give you everything you didn't ask for. God said, now Solomon, I'm going to give you the heads of your enemies. God said, I'm going to give you money. Uh, and Solomon, if you walk up right before me, I will give you long life. Well, it is this Solomon that though he has wisdom, you see, wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the initiation. Wisdom is top priority. But uh, there's something above wisdom. Uh, oh, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. But if you're going to get it, all you're getting, get understanding. Uh, you see, the word of God, it is wisdom. This is wisdom. This is wisdom. Ah, and when you quote scripture, you are quoting wisdom. Ah, oh, some of y'all sound real wise because you can quote scripture. Ah, oh, some of y'all, I can start a scripture off and you can finish it. Ooh, you got wisdom. Ah, but wisdom is not enough. Ah, you must have understanding and obedience. Ah, because Solomon had wisdom but he wasn't obedient ha. what God told Solomon not to do is what Solomon start doing ha. oh he start trading and he start bartering with Egypt and getting horses ha. God said oh, don't take the stranger to be your wife oh, it wasn't a race issue it was a worship issue ha. God said two can't walk together except they be agreed and if you hook up with somebody that don't believe like you believe, Solomon, they're going to turn your heart. Solomon, start marrying what the Bible calls strange women. Oh, he even brought these women in, and in the holy city, he starts setting up temples and idols unto their God. Now, when Solomon was young enough, he could handle it. Ha, oh, but when Solomon got older and his patience began to wear thin, ha, oh, Solomon started giving in to their pernicious ways. Ha, the Bible teaches us that now, ha, after the death of Solomon, the kingdom gets torn. Ha, the Bible teaches us that there is Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Ha, the scripture says because one would not take the advice of the elderly, but rather he took the advice of his friends. The people walked away, and now you have what is known as the northern kingdom, known as Israel, and the southern kingdom, known as Judah. And when God would send prophets, sometimes some prophets prophesied to Israel. Other prophets prophesied to Judah. But then there were other prophets that prophesied to them both. It was called the whole house of Israel. Israel, the ten tribes, ten tribes went a-whoring after other gods. 
things. God preserved two or the one and a half, the two and a half. God preserved them because God had made a covenant. And God said that there would always, God promised, um, that there would always be someone on the throne from the lineage of David. Uh, it has to be because Christ, uh, who is the seed of David, uh, uh, he's the seed of Abraham, the son of David, uh, he has to be able to come back uh, and he's got to be able to have rightful heirship to the throne to sit on the throne. Lord have mercy. Uh, so God said, I will preserve, I will preserve. I will preserve the lineage so that Christ can come back, church. Oh, the Bible teaches us that there. Oh, the, the two tribes, Judah, holds fast predominantly to the things that God said. It is the northern kingdom. It is Israel. The Bible says they go a-whoring. The scripture says they commit idolatry. One scripture calls it adultery. Spiritual adultery. Oh, they keep saying God is their God, but they start bowing before other gods. They keep saying that they love Jehovah, but they're splitting their love between Jehovah and idols who have eyes that cannot see. They got hands, but they can't deliver. So the Bible speaks, and God says that while Israel is going to whore Oh, y'all, the scripture can paint such pictures. Ooh. Oh, the Lord didn't just say they backslid. The Lord didn't just say they sinned. The Lord said they went a-whoring. You can't get no more descriptive than that. The book said they went a-whoring. Oh, it just, it, it just, ooh, it just, it's just some words the scripture uses that just make you feel bad. Oh, the Bible says they went a-whoring after other gods. The Bible says God sends a prophet. By the name of Hosea, Hoshea, uh, Hosea, Hoshea. Uh, uh, some derive it as a derivative from Yeshua. Uh, uh, it means the name alone means salvation. Uh, the name Hosea, Hoshea, Yeshua. Uh, uh, the name alone means deliverance and salvation. Uh, God raises up Hosea and God says, Son of man, yes, Lord. God says, I want you to go. It's time for you to get married. Yes, Lord. God says, I want you to go out. Go out to the corner. Go out to the corner and find a harlot. Find a woman of the night. Find a street walker. Oh, I wonder what you would have said if you were in that prayer. Oh, Ah, God, yeah, yeah. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Uh-uh, 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 the devil is a liar. God says, go find a wife amongst the women, the daughters of whoredom. Ah. Lord, Lord, you want, God says, go and do it. Go and marry. Ah. Go, but Lord, uh-uh, your word says, uh-uh, 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 I can't be unequally yoked. God says, go do it. God says, marry her and bring her into thine house. God says, clean her up. God says, clean her up and remove her from her lovers with an S. Lovers ha, means that she ain't just been with some one other somebody, ha, or she been with a plethora of people. Ha. Oh, when you walk down the street with her, folk gonna say, "Oh, I've been with her. I've been with her. I know her." Ha. Oh yeah, I remember that night. I know her. Ha, ha, ha. God says, "But I want you to clean her up and then give her your name." I know what they call her in the streets, but I need you to place your name upon her. God says, not only do I want you to clean her up, not only do I want you to give her your name, but I want you to bring her into your house. Oh, get her from my mouth the streets. Get her off the streets and bring her into your house. Oh, the Bible says, goes on. He gets this woman. We find out later her name is Gomer. Ah, 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 here comes this woman he cleans her up ah, the bible says and Hosea knew his wife ah, 
The scripture says when he knows her, she conceives. The Bible says when she conceives, she conceives, and they call his first name Jezreel. God said, and I'm going to tell you what to name your kids. God said the first boy is going to be named Jezreel. God, why you, what, what does Jezreel mean? God says, his name is a prophetic utterance unto the people that I shall judge them. God says, and then once you, the Bible says, and then after they had the first child, they had another child. The scripture says, and the second one was a daughter. And God says, call her name, Laruhamen. God says, her name also shall prophesy to the people that I'm going to extend some judgment and I ain't going to have mercy. God said after that baby was born, they had a third child and the third child was a boy. God said now when you have the third one, God said you are to name that one. God said his name shall be Loami. God said, name him Loami. God says, because I will not be your people and you will not be my God. Oh, church, after, after Hosea has called this woman off the street, after this man then married the woman and cleaned her up and gave her his name, after he gave her a nice house, and then she turns around and gives him three children, he comes home one day, and she didn't left the kids with somebody else. Oh, and she said, deuces, I'm out of here. Oh, where does she go? The Bible says she returns to her lovers. Oh, it wasn't just one somebody that caught her heart. She went back tricking again. She went back to them streets. She out there in them streets. He a preacher. He a prophet. He got kids at home. An old girl out in them streets. On that corner. The Bible says and God speaks. God says go get your wife and bring her home. God says go get her. Where she at God? God has to tell the prophet where his wife is. Oh, I wonder what would you do? Wonder what would you do? Wonder what would you do if your spouse was cheating on you and God showed you the address where they were? I wonder would you walk up in there to my Yikabobabosha? The Lord said, come home. You might be speaking something, but it wouldn't be tongues. Not the most of you. Some of y'all got the real Holy Ghost. It's a few of you I question what you got. Oh, some of y'all would have said, oh, 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 so this way you are? Uh-huh. Some of y'all said, oh, 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 uh-huh. See, you thought you got away. But the Lord showed me where you were. You would have been knocking out windows and flattening tires. Oh, Hosea goes and says, come home. Hosea says, come home. He brings her home. And Hosea wants to know, why did you leave? God said, you want to know why she left? She left looking for water. Because she was thirsty. God says she left looking for flax. God says she left looking for bread. Oh, but Hosea said, Lord, why would she leave looking for water and bread when she had gold and silver in the house? Why is she looking for stuff that is temporary when I had stuff that was lasting for her? Oh, Hosea said, I can't understand it. God says she left because she was thirsty. She wanted water. God says she left because she was dry. But she had oil in the house. She had gold in the house. She had silver. The Bible teaches us that we learn 
she comes home, ah, only to stay for a little while, and then she back in them streets again. Ah, Hosea said, Lord, now wait a minute. I know you a merciful God and I know you ain't gonna put no more upon us than we able to bear but how long oh Lord why are you having me to go through this God said Hosea I just wanted you to get a taste of how I feel God said when I found you you were polluted in your own blood and you were left for dead God said, when I found you, I had to pick you up uh, out of the muck and the mire. Uh, God said, when I called you, uh, oh, you had no covenant, uh, you had no hope, uh, and you had no God in this world. Uh, God said, I cleaned you up. Uh, God said, I put my name on you, uh, and I brought you into my father's house. Oh, uh, in my father's house, Christ says, there are many mansions. Uh, oh, church. Uh, oh, God said, and after I cleaned you up, uh, after I washed you and sanctified you, uh, after I made this people who were not a people my people, uh, look what they did. Uh, I gave them my covenant uh, and gave them the writings with my own finger. Uh, God said, I wrote with my own finger uh, on the tables of stone. Uh, I gave them my covenant. Uh, I gave them bread out the sky. Uh, I gave them water out of the rock. Uh, I made the mountains skip like lambs. Uh, God said, I made the Red Sea uh, stand up like walls on either side. Uh, God said, I made Jordan back up. Through kings for their sake. God said, but after all I did, look at how they treat me. They forgot I'm their deliverer. They forgot I'm their redeemer. And they start bowing down to graven images. They start bowing down to gods that have hands. But they can't deliver. They made eyes on their God. But though their God has eyes, he not see. God said, now Hosea, you see what it feels like after you went into covenant with somebody and they decide to break the covenant. Even when they go back and seven devils worse than the first enter in, God said the one they left is the one that's got to come and deliver them. Church of the living God. Hosea comes to Israel. He calls it because Ephraim is the central. And he refers to Ephraim. But it is the northern kingdom. He says, hear, O Ephraim. Hear, O Israel. Let us turn back to God. He's been a merciful God. He forgave us before. He'll forgive us again. He said he redeemed us once. He'll redeem us again. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that when Hosea went to get his wife the second time, he couldn't just bring her home. He had to pay for her. He had to Hey, oh, she had got caught up in a system, and he had to pay. I'm trying to be nice with it. Oh, she was working for the man, and he had to pay to get his own wife back. God said, look what I did for you after I delivered you the first time, and you got caught up again. I redeemed you. Not with silver and gold, not with dollars nor pounds, but I washed you and redeemed you with the precious blood of Jesus. Church, Hosea says, all we have to do is repent, make a turn, change your direction when God says you were wrong. 
arguing with God. Say, yes, God, but I want to be right. Church, we used to sing a song, nothing between my soul and my Savior. I want to be right. We used to pray prayers like, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. Why? Because I want to be right. I want to be saved. And I want to be whole. Hosea said, if you just repent, if you repent, God will. He'll come and after two days, he'll revive you. Church, I'm thankful for this three-day revival because according to Hosea's equation, after last night, somebody should be revived. Somebody should say, I feel like going on. After last night, somebody should testify, having therefore obtained help from the Lord, I continue. After last night, somebody should be able to say, as I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I got a testimony. Hosea said, if you repent, give God two days. On the second day, he will revive. But I ain't just excited about last night. I'm excited because today is the third day. Hosea said, in two days, he will revive. But on the third day, he going to lift you up. I declare in this house, repent, be revived, and rise. We used to sing an old song that said, get up from there, sitting down. God can't use you, sitting down. He got to work for you to do. I know you blew it last year. I know you didn't cross every T and you didn't dot every I. But I got a word for you. Repent, be revived, and rise. Get up from there. Tell God if you give me some more grace, I'll try again. If you give me another chance, I'll do it right. I'll say what God told me to say. I'll do what God said do. I'm going to be what God called me to be. Help me preach. Grab somebody. Say repent. Be revived. And rise. Rise up to walk in the newness of life. Rise up to obey the word of the Lord. Rise up to be the people that God's calling for in these last and evil days. Don't you stay there. Don't let depression rest on you. Don't let condemnation sit in your spirit. Repent. Be revived. And rise, make a declaration. I ain't gonna stay here. I shall live and not die. I'm gonna declare the works of the Lord. For God I live. Where the hell falls out the sky, or wherever the water rises above the bank, come hell or high water. With Jesus, and I, I'm going to. Tell somebody around you, say, I.
no, 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 no. You got to say it like a preacher. I asked you to help me preach. So you got to say it like a preacher. Say, I, I got an equation for you. Tell them, say, I, I have an equation for you. Repent, be revived, and rise. Repent, be revived, and rise. Repent, be revived, and rise. Rise to walk in the newness of life. Rise to walk in revelation and understanding. Rise to serve the Lord. Why hang ye? Your hearts on the willow trees. Get up from here. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Make known his deeds in the congregation of the righteous. You don't have to stay where you fail. Repent. Be revived. And rise. Yes, you sin. But acknowledge your sin. Confess your sin. Repent. Be revived. And rise. Do me a favor. Tell somebody around you. Say, I got a reason to celebrate. I'm asking you, help me celebrate. Because this is the day that I shall rise. This is the day that I shall rise. Somebody celebrate their resurrection. Clap your hands. Celebrate your resurrection. Open your mouth and tell God thank you. Open your mouth and tell God that you love him. Every celebration should have some celebration music. Give me something to clap with. Give me something to dance with. Give me something to wave my hand with. But let everything that has breath give him breath. Hosea said, after two days, God will revive, but on the third day, he going to lift you up, what time I, on the third day, he'll receive you unto himself, tell somebody, I refuse to stay. In the hole that I'm in, I'm getting up out of here. I'm getting up out of here. I'm going to praise him as he lifts me. I'm going to worship as he lifts me. Tell your neighbor, say, get a good look at me. Because the next time you see me, I won't be in the same situation. He's going to get me up out of here. Three people say, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. Tell three people, say, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. Tell them, say, I'm unapologetic about it. Tell them, I'm unapologetic. 
prophetic about it. I'm saying goodbye, world. It's a shy. I'm saying see you later, problems. I got a higher call. I got a higher calling. I got a greater place to go to. After two days, he will revive. But on the third day, he will raise me up. What? Lean over, tell somebody, say, it's my third day. It's my third day. It's my third day. It's my third day. When you get home tonight, tell everybody in your house, this is the third day. When you get to work tomorrow, and people say good morning, say it's the third day. When you leave here tonight, text somebody in the phone and just say, it's the third day. If they ask any questions, send them to Hosea chapter number six. God said after two days, I will revive. I know your spirit is gone from you. I know what you've been in. You've been in so long until it has drained you. God said, but when I revive you, I'm going to renew your strength. I'm going to restore your joy. And I'm going to give you something to hope for. But the second day, is not where Hosea stopped. Hosea said on the third day, he will raise us up. When you keep reading Hosea's prophecy, he even starts prophesying about Jesus Christ. God said, out of Egypt have I called my son. He starts prophesying about the day God would deliver. He told Israel. He told all oh, oh, Ephraim. And then he even spoke to Judah. He said, Judah, thou art treacherous. Why would God call Judah treacherous? God said, Judah, while you watched Israel go through, you saw me chasten Israel because of their sin. God said, but I call you treacherous because not only did you watch them sin and then you watched them get punished for their sin, but then you turned around and did the same thing they did and thought you would get away. God said, oh Judah, thou art treacherous because you thought because I got them I wouldn't get you. God said, if I didn't get you, it would show that I didn't love you. Because I chastened those that I love. Saints of God, my assignment is to tell you, repent, be revived, and rise. I don't care how far you've fallen. Repent, be revived, rise I don't care if it was your fault repent be revived and rise I don't care if you messed up publicly or privately repent be revived and rise so what somebody else sinned a little sin and yours was a big sin repent be revived and rise. So what if everybody know what you did? Repent. Be revived and rise. 
So what if don't nobody know what you did? You still got to repent. Be revived. But get up from there. Do me a favor, just hit somebody and say, get up from there. Don't you let them wallow in pity. Get up from there. Don't you let them sit in the seat of depression. Get up from there. I know you fell off the horse. Get back on the horse. Repent. Be revived. Arise. God spoke to Jeremiah, Hosea. Hosea said, let's go back to the Lord. Though he tore us, he chastised us. He tore us, but he going to put us back together. I know we've gotten away from corporal punishment, but in your past, Anybody your parents tore you up? I know they don't recommend that stuff now, but some of the stuff, some of the ways I got tore up, my parents might be in jail today. Hosea says, let's return to the Lord. Though he tore us up. My father used to get me and then he'd say, come give me a hug. I did this because I love you. Oh, there were some days I wanted to say, don't love me then. assignment was to share with this house a three way occasion process repent be revived and arise if you follow God's equation watch this be an amazing year for you Watch this be a phenomenal and epic year for you. Don't go to God blaming other people. You repent. It's me, O oh Lord. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Who shall I behold? Against thee have I done this evil in your sight. When nobody else saw it, you saw it, God. I turn. Ulamanasha. Osiana. If you just tell God, I turn. God, I know I've been walking in the wrong way with the wrong people, but I turn. All you got to do is turn. Anybody in here ever been driving the wrong way and you knew you were going the wrong way, but you just thought if I go a couple of more miles, it might get right? Anybody ever been driving saying, none of this looks familiar, but you say, I'm going to just keep driving. Girl, I think we turned off on the wrong way. No, just go down a little further until somebody gets up enough sense to say, just turn around. You done tried everything. You done made everybody in the car get quiet. Y'all be quiet. You done turned down the radio. Why you turn? Why are you turning down the radio? The radio didn't make you go wrong. You know why you want everybody in the back to be quiet? You know you turn down the radio? Because you're listening. You're listening for some advice. God says, I got the best equation for you. Repent. Turn. Be revived and rise. 
Some of y'all trying to get up, but you won't tell God you were wrong. Some of y'all trying to act like you ain't done nothing. You got to admit, it was me, God. It was me. I blew it. Repent. Be revived. Rise. Watch this be a great year for you. If you just repent. Be revived. Hosea said on the third day. The psalmist said, he lifted me up above the heads of my enemies. God will take you to higher heights. Elder Davis started with the Sunday hymn, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's tabled land, a higher plane than I've already found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My assignment tonight was to give you a three-piece equation. Repent. Be revived. Rise. Ooh, preach to somebody around you. Say, this is going to be a blessed year. Tell somebody, this is going to be a blessed year. I'm going to rise this year. I might have fallen last year, but I'm going to rise this year. Tonight, it's time for you to repent. It's time for you to acknowledge, I'm guilty, God. I can't blame anybody else. It's me. It's me. It's me. I did it. I shouldn't have done it. I was in error, I sinned, it's me, it's me, it's me. If you would acknowledge it, you stop ignoring it. Stop talking about, well, if they hadn't, I wouldn't have. That ain't repentance. That ain't confession. We got to say, oh, you did it. And you say, yep, that ain't confession, that's admittance. That's just admittance. I admit I did it. But I dare you to come and say, God, I want to be right. I want to be saved. Anybody want to be saved in this last day? <laughs> to the uttermost, Jesus saved. Now, when you went down in water in the name of the Lord Jesus, he washed away all your past sin. When he filled you full of his spirit, he quickened you and made you alive. So though you've been saved from your past sin, now he's saving you from you. The penalty of death is no longer hanging over your head. Now, He's working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. You ain't saved to the uttermost yet. Don't, don't get new. Don't play. You still slamming doors and saying words you shouldn't. He's still working on you. But I dare you to repent. Be revived. Today, if you're not saved and you want to be, this is that part of the service we call the altar call. The ministers are now moving and they're ready to prepare. Prepare for you. They're willing to pray with you. They're willing to pray for you. Willing to give you biblical advice on how you can get right with God. Today is the day of salvation. Today. Get your life right. Don't you leave here the same way you came. Repent. Turn. Change your direction. Let tonight be the night you make the change. He washes. Just why.
as snow. If you know that song, sing it. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Can anybody help me? All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. Of the crimson stain, he washes. He washed them white as snow. Tonight, don't let the dying of Christ be in vain. Repent. Be revived. Get up out of that pew and walk down that aisle. Don't go home and say, I should have went up there. No, no, no. Don't leave here and say, I almost did it. Tonight, what's today's date? Today is 8th, January the 8th. Ain't this a good day to have a new beginning? Oh, God bless you for coming. Thank you for your boldness. Everybody might not come for the same reason. And it's nobody else's business why you come. Come on, young man. But you have to be bold enough to come. Get up and come. Come on. Let somebody pray for you. Let somebody pray with you. Tonight is your night to be baptized in water in the name which is above every name. That name is Jesus. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. All to him I owe. Sin has left. Sin has left a crimson stain. Oh, but he washed. He washed. God bless you, young lady. Thank you. He
Somebody's about to be baptized in water. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. We thank you to Hoshamasi. We thank him tonight. Somebody repented. Somebody's been revived. Lean over, tell somebody, say, I shall rise. God. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Though he has torn, he will bind us. And after two days, he will revive us. But on the third day, he gonna raise us up. Somebody thank God for a resurrection. <laughs> Hallelujah. We praise him tonight for the things that he has done in this house in these past three days. Thanking him for the word of God. The word of God that has touched our hearts, ministered to our spirits, and saved our souls. As they're preparing the young lady for water baptism in the name which is above every name, that name is Jesus. Would you be kind enough to take somebody by the hand all the way around you? you to pray for them and this is the prayer I want you to pray I want you to pray that they would walk in repentance and that they would walk in revival and that they shall rise I want you to pray that they would walk in repentance that they would walk in revival that they shall rise. Start praying for them right now. Start praying for them. Get past that silent prayer. Open your mouth and cry out to God for your brother and sister. Oh God. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Come on, pray for them. All things are possible. All things are possible. Only if you only in Jesus' name. 
Somebody give God praise for that prayer. of that. Join him with that only belief. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible if you only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. prepare to get a blessing to be a blessing to this church I need those of you that are capable of doing it join me with a $40 gift get it now we're giving to the work of the law everybody get an offering Everybody, if you're giving electronically, get your debit cards and credit cards ready. That same card you use for gas, that same card you use for groceries, you can give to the house of the Lord. We do understand that some of us don't carry cash anymore. We see that we're moving toward a cashless society. So possibly you don't have cash on you, but we've made provisions for you. You can give electronically tonight. Those of you that are tech savvy and you have the Givelify app on your phone or your mobile device, you may give by uh, way of app, the application on your phone. Make sure you find Greater Apostolic Faith Temple on 4th Street in Detroit, Michigan. Those of you that are giving by cash or check, if you're giving by check, make sure you make your check payable too. Greater Apostolic Faith Temple. Those of you that are giving by cash, we're asking you to unfold your offering. Unfold your offering. 
You might not have what somebody else has, but I want you to give as God has prospered you or what you or what you've determined to give. Once you get whatever you choose to give, come join us in this aisle right here, this center aisle. Everybody come. Don't wait on anybody else. Everybody just start walking. All things are positive. All things. All things are positive. All things are positive. effort it no longer belongs to you it belongs to the work of the Lord father see what's in our hands because it is coming from our hearts we give willingly we give cheerfully and we give with glad hearts you told Israel you'd rebuke the devourer for their sake we thank you God for not only have we been blessed but we've also learned that you didn't bless us to keep it just upon ourselves we were blessed and we were made a blessing We've been blessed to help bless somebody else. I pray and I ask of you that these offerings that have been received, let them be used, God, and is seen fit in the house, that this house, God, might be blessed, that this community might be blessed, that the gospel of Jesus Christ might be spread around this city, this state, this country, and the world. I trust you to do it, and I thank you for it. God, I'm asking you that when all needs have been met, let there be surplus. Somebody call a surplus. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody giving to the work of the Lord. Let's give it on to David Hollis another great big round of applause. Let's give him some love for all three days that he's been with us. Let's stand to our feet all over the room.
We're getting ready to be dismissed. But what a word we heard tonight. Anybody revived? I said, anybody feel revived? Anybody ready to rise? I just want us to sing the refrain of that song a little down. If you'll help us, all you got to do all this week, whatever you want, I want you to keep that song in your heart. That all you have to do, no matter how hard it seems, is do this. Now I want y'all, everybody singing. This is the way we're going to dismiss tonight because we don't formally dismiss in January. But I want everybody to sing those words of that song. Y'all ready? Let's go. All Come on.